life agents with an actual real estate life that they want, they love, and that they're proud of. So I want to welcome you uh, to our interview today. My social media guru, she's the woman. Hey, man, she's the woman. <laughs> this is Karen Taradas. Welcome, Karen. Hey, how are you? I'm great. Um, so Karen is joining us today because she was telling me about a phenomenal Pinterest experiment that she did on herself. And uh, that sounds awful. Doesn't it? Who doesn't like an experiment? On yourself. <laughs> so she was able to drive a lot of traffic using Pinterest. And um, I said, hey, we need to hear about this. Lenders and agents need to know about it, need to hear about this. So, um, uh, Karen, I'm glad you're here. First off, tell us why is using Pinterest super important anyway? Well, it's, it's, well, let me throw just a couple of stats at you. It's got like 250 million users a month. It is one of the number one um, sites for referral traffic. You have, um, I didn't know this shocking uh, but millennials use it as much as they use instagram i didn't realize it was right on the same level of instagram and when millennials use it they use it for inspiration like they use it to go consider what they're going to purchase it's a it's like a dream board would be yeah. um 63 of millennial pinterest users mentioned mentioned that pinterest helps them discover new brands which is critical 51 percent of women women it's still 80 percent female by the way um, the average order of sales coming from Pinterest is higher than any other social media platform. Um, Pinterest users spend 29% more time shopping on Pinterest. Um, high, it's, it's very high income educated households, uh, households that are more likely to spend higher dollars on real estate. Um, high income educated households are two times as likely to be on Pinterest as a low income or low education um, eighty-five percent of women use it to plan their what they consider to be life moments. What's a life moment? Moving to a new house, getting married, having kids—that's huge. House real estate porn is huge. Um, Ninety percent of weekly users use Pinterest to make purchase decisions. Also huge. And of course, Pinterest drives more than thirty-three percent more traffic than Facebook. The stats are just overwhelmingly high. It, it's huge for referral traffic. Well, driving that amount of traffic is huge and being more than Facebook. So um, I've shared this before. My husband is a home builder and does uh, remodels. Mm -hmm. And every single conversation I saw them on Pinterest, yes. people go yes. and put, you know, their favorites yes. on it. So um, my daughter just started working um, with us, interning with us this um this summer and uh, her degree is in marketing and I told her to go check out several things on Pinterest and find me the latest uh, decor, um, some beautiful rooms. And, you know, she was really finding some great things yesterday mm -hmm. and uh, I can see where it probably can suck you in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you can do a collection of, Hey, I like this style. Right. And yes. so, moving it that way. So what what can and how can we actually use it to produce money making traffic in our real estate businesses? Well, one of the first things you need to think about, it's not stop considering it as a social media platform, although it is, but it's really more of a search engine. Um, it has the capability to to really drive your whole uh, drive traffic to your website. So Okay, so what matters? How do you use it? How do you make it work for you? Well, it, it works really. There's there's three things that Pinterest pulls from. It pulls from saved pins, it pulls from related pins, and it pulls pins from your interests. So that's how it fills your feed. That's how it fills everybody's feed. Those three things, saved pins, related pins, and pins from your interests. So when you're setting it up and you tell it what you're interested in, it pays attention to that kind of thing. And there's four main factors that show up uh, that determine how you show up. So what are the main factors? It looks at domain quality. It looks at pin quality. It looks at pinner quality. How, how good are you at what you're doing? And it looks at relevance. So what is that 
how does that kind of translate to what you're doing? Well, it means you have to have a reliable website or reliable resource for your original organic pens. It means you have to be a consistent pinner where it considers you to be a high quality pinner. Um, you want to make sure that you have great pens, great content, and you want to make sure that the topics are relevant. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit more into that, but so, so far, so good. Am I making sense? Yeah, okay. absolutely. You're making sense. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> put you on the screen yourself, so that you're <laughs> educating. So it takes me. Okay. A I'm just, just making sure. Okay. So yeah. how do you? What's the one of the or several of the best ways to kind of get started and get the ball rolling? Um, very first thing, you need to convert to a business account, and I get a lot of pushback about this one thing. Uh, you know, I don't want to convert. Well, you really need to for two reasons: analytics. And, um, of course, it, it gives you, um, it, it, I don't know, they won't really confirm whether it makes you a priority or not, but I know your analytics are there and it allows you to have paid pins, just like Facebook paid accounts go through pages, not personal accounts. Um, it also allows you to have keywords in your business name and your username and in your bio. And that's super important because again, search engine is it, it Pinterest is its own search engine. So when you go in and you're looking for um, the real estate um, and Hoover, if that's built in to your username and your uh, business name, you're going to dominate. So, you know, those folks that are how to stay, like if staging is your expertise and you want to talk about how to stage and it's built into your username and your business name and those keywords are in your bio, Pinterest considers that a priority. It's going to push you more to the top. Um, another thing you want to do is claim your website as a business. It shows Pinterest that you're legitimate and that you're a real business and that you have a, a, a real website. Um, that is huge because uh, they're, you know, there's still spam everywhere. And I try to check my pins and make sure that they're current. And I like to make sure that I'm sending people to a real website, but it's important for you because Pinterest looks at pin quality and relevance. So if your website isn't claimed, it makes it more difficult for them to consider you to be a good quality pinner. Um, you also want to be a consistent pinner. Um, what does this mean? Well, ideally, it means you want to pin daily. Now, I know that can be a little overwhelming. Um, and when I tell people you want to try to pin 60 pins a week, most everybody I talk to flips out on me. But <laughs> um, now, uh, Izzy actually, Izzy has a question about this right now. Yes. She wants to know, does everything you post have to be yours? No, absolutely not. You want to do some pins and you want to do some original. I like to see, I'm big on 80-20. Um, I can't, I generate a pretty decent amount of content for myself, but I can't generate brand new content daily. It's overwhelming. So if you can do about 20% of the content is yours every week, um, that's great. And 80% is repins. And it doesn't have to be your stuff that you're repinning. Although, like for you, Jenny, if you have an awesome house that's for sale and it's got a gorgeous bedroom, you can put it on your board that's um, Jenny Williams EXP. And then you can take that bedroom and put it into bedroom inspiration. So you can take one pin that's yours and put it on multiple boards so it can be seen by um, different people looking for different things. That's that's tremendous. Um, and you guys and what a creative way to promote. Yes. Um, you know, we need a board that says um, uh, uh, fixer uppers because. <laughs> yes. That's tremendously that probably, searchable. That would probably get a, uh, a a lot of attraction. Let's see just how dated this house is. <laughs> real estate humor is is it tremendously start terminology because people think it's funny. You know, when you put the door on the bathroom so that you can't actually get in the bathroom, that's funny, and people like to look at that stuff. So that's totally okay to include a board like that. Well, I did see a photo on Facebook the other day where someone was showing houses and it was all mirrors in the bathroom. Because that's where I want to be. <laughs> With long wall mirrors. That's so, exactly that's what I want. Yeah. yeah. That would be funny. But uh, what a great and creative way, though, for you to be able to promote your other properties, whether it be yards and oh. gardens and flowers or. Um, uh, new uh, kitchen design, or yep. I mean, and it's spring landscaping is hot right now, gardening's big right now, and we're going to talk about that too. Okay, good. Okay, so okay. all right, now we know why 
when yeah. you do it. Why? And we're, we're getting then, into the how. So now that you know that you need to be on there, you need to make sure you've got a great username and a great um, business name. You want to make sure that you have converted to a business account, claim your website. You want to be consistent and pin every day. Um, your biggest traffic is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, general, just generally. Um, so you, yeah, you can, you can pin just Friday and Saturday and that can work for you, but you're going to have your most success if you do some pins every day. Um, and it doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to pin 20 pins a day. A couple of pins a day is enough to keep you relevant. And something that a lot of folks don't know that Pinterest, um, started doing about a year ago, your first five pins of the day are considered your most relevant and they carry the most weight. So if you just pin your own stuff and you do it first every day, those pins are considered by Pinterest to be the most relevant. So if you don't waste it on <laughs> make your first five pins your own or make them so that they are, they carry enough weight so that it's something that you really want to share. Um, okay, so consistent means daily, yours and theirs, you do want to repin. Uh, so what is great content? What can, constitutes a good pin? Um, um, before you get right into that, can you? is there anything else we need to know about actually creating that business page account? Well, you want to be consistent in your branding. If you're going to be Jenny Williams EXP, you want to be Jenny Williams EXP across the board. Um, what, whoever you're going to be, make it consistent. Because unless your name... Whoever you're going to be. <laughs> And we can decide that, y'all. Yeah. Today I'm going to be a potato. Yeah. So, <laughs> whatever you're going to be, you want to do it across all the all the boards and stay in the same lane. And it's important because not everybody's lucky enough to have a name that's super unique. I, there might be another Jenny Williams in the world. I, I could be wrong about that. So by branding it with your own stuff and making sure that it's got your company name in it, it helps people identify you so that when they go look for you and they go look to find your information, you're there. That makes sense, right? Yeah. And so Heather just asked, can you post squeeze pages in Pinterest? Can I post what? Squeeze pages, like yeah, uh, different right. URLs. Landing oh yeah, absolutely. You can put, if it's a URL and it exists, you can add it into Pinterest. They get a little, it's very similar to Facebook. It gets a little, Funny if you're trying to promote and you have to do all the fair, you have to hear all the fair housing rules if you're going to boost that pin. But yes, as long as it's a URL, you can absolutely add it. And something that a lot of folks don't know, you can pin from your Instagram account. That's very oh, cool. Because that's that's cool. Cool. you can't pin from Facebook, but um, you can do anything you curate that's yours on Instagram. You can pin it directly to your own board or um, different boards and it totally will go back to you because it's going to circulate back to your Instagram account. Which that's is cool. very cool. Yeah. I don't um, know. Especially if you're taking cool photos like mirrored bathrooms, but um, <laughs> A mirrored bathroom. that would be an awesome photo actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. We've got that going and now, you know, now let's go into how do we make this happen? Right. Okay. How do you what? make that traffic capture it and, well, one of the keys is it has to, you have to have good pins. So what constitutes a good pin? Um, a good pin has to have a good title. You want to have a great graphic. And here's something that a lot of folks don't know. Faces do great on Instagram, not great on Pinterest. So if you want to really instigate traffic, you want to have a graphic that's got um, the title built into the image with not really faces. I, I don't know why faces don't do great on Pinterest, but they don't. Um, well, that's well, actually really good to know. Yeah. Um, and and you, I I like testing. And of course, I'm a dork. But like, if we're going to test this class, like we're going to talk about Pinterest, we may have one that's got um, horrors. It's got my face on it in the bottom corner, and then we have a board that just has the title to the presentation, and you see which one does the best, and just repeatedly, it's the one that has just the text. Well, that's very good to know because, I mean, even on Facebook, I feel like um, faces of real people, not necessarily Shutterstock mm -hmm. or um, Upsplash or, you know, any of those canned photos work better when it's real. Yeah, absolutely. That does. They do so much better on Instagram. They do great on Pinterest, on, excuse me, Facebook. But Pinterest likes yeah. just a plain old graphic with no faces. It's, it's very odd. Um, 
you want to make sure to include your appropriate keywords and now hashtags are searchable on Pinterest as well. So anything that's relevant to the search. So if it's a house that's for sale, you want to make sure you use the terminology home for sale. You want to hashtag the broker. You want to do the hashtag, your branded hashtag. You want to include all that information in your content, your description so that it's searchable. Um, appropriate boards. Um, boards are a tremendous part of your success. Um, they have to have the right names. Not that I'm knocking Jenny's favorite things, but most people are not looking for Jenny's favorite things. They're looking for master bedroom inspiration or um, gorgeous uh, gardening ideas or beautiful decks or what whatever is searchable. That's what your board names need to be. So board names are tremendous. And that goes back to having keyword searchability and hashtag searchability. It's all part of the same thing. And then, um, you have to keep it seasonal. Uh, this is kind of where I uh, I did the experiment you mentioned. I did it on myself. I have uh, 5,000 followers-ish on Pinterest. And I was averaging about 16,000 views a month, which is that's great, right? That's three times as many. Awesome. So I've been reading about, and of course, and I always have this huge jump in October, November, December, because I love the holidays. And I'll get on Pinterest and pin, pin, pin for the holidays. And my numbers always spike. And I thought, huh, well, if I'm doing seasonal pins and that works, why don't I always do seasonal pins? Why doesn't it always work? So I did an experiment for Easter and I made a point to pin something Easter or spring related every day. Not a ton of them, maybe five or six every single day. And I saw my traffic in 30 days jump from 16,000 views to 34,000 views in 30 days. So what, wow. yeah, what does that tell you? <laughs> it tells you that Pinterest likes seasonal. So keep your season in mind and make sure your seasonal stuff is at the forefront. So you always want to be pinning to your own board, Jenny Williams, EXP, or Jenny Williams, get a real estate life. Whatever your branded board is going to be, you want to pin to that. And then you want to pin to homes for sale, homes for sale in Chelsea, what that, that board and then think about what's seasonal. What's happening right now? Mother's Day, that, I'm not, not to knock it, of course, I'm a mom. So boring to me. I'm like, I don't want to pin that, but it works great. Mother's Day's coming, graduation. Then you have summer, Father's Day, 4th of July. Those seasonal pins, that's what makes your traffic spike. And that's what keeps people following you and looking at your stuff and um, that, that busy, busy traffic. So you could do seasonal maintenance tips. You could do seasonal oh, yes. pour. You could do seasonal landscaping. You could yes. do um, seasonal patterns of buyers and sellers. Um, Spring cleaning. That Spring would be, staging. Yeah, a lot of good um, content. Oh, yeah. Spring cleaning is insanely hair. hot right now on Pinterest because that's what I want to do. I want to get cleaning tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to unfollow you if I see <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear about rubbing the lemon on the, oh yeah, I, don't, I don't care, but a lot of people do. So yeah. spring cleaning tips is a great one to use. Yeah. They do. Well, and you could even use, you know, how to use your um, grill for recipes outside and your outdoor patios because oh, yeah. outdoor living is just so important right now in the real estate world. Yeah. So, and you've got um, decks are hot right now. So if you talk about how to um, not just, not just spring cleaning or spring landscaping or planting for spring. There's just so many. And the easiest thing to find out about what's working is go into Pinterest and start typing out spring and it will auto fill it for you based on how other people are searching. And that's what you pin. Love it. So can you do video? Absolutely. Um, video is of course it rules. You can pin from YouTube. You can pin from Vimeo. You can upload uh, video directly into Pinterest. I'm not a huge fan of direct uploads to Pinterest because there's no URL. And that's that's one of my pet peeves. If I like information and I think it's awesome and I click on it, I want to go to the source. So if you have a cool video on Instagram, you know, pin it. If you have an awesome video on YouTube, pin it because I want to follow, follow the go down the rabbit hole and maybe go to your YouTube channel and see more stuff. I have found some of the coolest YouTube um, tricks and trends on Pinterest and therefore follow those YouTubers just because the, the Pinterest stuff is so cool. That is an excellent tip guys about yeah. 
because normally we like to upload to um, different formats of social media and not copy paste. Yep. And uh, she just said, no, copy don't, paste here. Don't so, do it. And, and Facebook, you know, plays favorites. They want you to upload your stuff directly into Facebook. But Pinterest, yeah. it favors the, the resources. And that really helps make you a more relative pinner with your verified site and your verified content that has a verified um, location, um, point of origin, because YouTube's huge. It's, it's a real thing. You know, people go there every day, so that's huge. It helps you a lot. It is a real thing. It is a real thing. Jack said he'll spend hours a day on YouTube. So, um, Sadly, so do I, yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, great. So what's next? What else do we need to know? Okay. So you want to make sure, of course, that you have, um, you want to make sure that you're relevant and you want to make sure that your first five pins day are your own. Um, and you have hashtags are new, but keywords are not. So, and I get this question a lot too. If I'm doing a repin and the content is bad or the, um, the keywords are not great, do I change it? Yeah, I mean, that's the short answer. If it's a really great piece of content or it's a really great image that you want to share, you want to change the text. And there's no text at all. That drives me crazy. How do people even find the stupid thing if there's no words on it? So make sure that the text works for you, especially if it's something that you're going to put on your own board. And I did mention boards are very important, especially when you're getting started. You, and there are still people who are just getting started. Um, you want to make sure you have between 15 and 20 boards. And that sounds like a lot, but you'll go through them really quickly. And when you're very first starting, you need to have at least 20 pins per board because you don't want someone to go to your profile and pull up your information. And this board's empty and this board has two pins and this board has a weird name like ooh la la. What is that? What does that even mean? So you want to make sure to have a strong presence that you need to have um, at least 15 to 20 boards, at least 15 to 20 pins a piece. Ideally, you're pinning at least five pins a day. And ideally, you're pinning at least 20% of your own original curated content that's your personal content a week. Yeah. Okay, so today um, I have a listing that's going live today, and it's got a brand new kitchen in it. Oh, cool. So I can focus on that. I can even do before and after, right? Oh, yeah. Before and after is great. Okay, and then it also has a newly refinished hardwood floors. So, um, okay. and I'm meeting the guy there. Is it better for me to have a photo with him and mm -hmm. talk about his work? Or is it better for me to do a video with him, talk about his work, and then show photos? Um, you can do, well, ideally you want to do a little bit of both. Because okay. you can do photos and you can do a small video highlight on Instagram and you pin it from your Instagram. Just you want to make sure when you're pinning from your Instagram that you you might have to rewrite the content so that it's more Pinterest friendly. Okay. Um, maybe tone down the hashtags and really talk about what it is. Newly renovated, remodeled kitchen. But the cool thing about pinning from Instagram, it auto fills. So whatever you told it on Instagram, it will pull it into Pinterest. So and I love circular, and so does Google. Um, you go from one with one when web, website feeds into the other website, it helps your traffic. It helps your, um, what word am I looking for? It makes you a, a reliable resource. So I guess the short answer is a short video would be awesome. Pictures are also awesome. Put them into Instagram and then pin them from there. That's okay. not a short answer at all. I'm sorry. Well, no, that's good. And uh, Lupe says, um, hey, Lupe, um, it says boards within my Pinterest that I like. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with Pinterest. I've used it to keep my ideas, but not for business. Yes, and it's okay. Pinterest and Instagram are two of those platforms where it's okay to have a personal interest. Um, I have a, um, and I, I'm not a great example because I use Pinterest as a parking lot for content and ideas for clients. So you can kind of tell who I'm working with based on my Pinterest boards. But for you guys, you would have one that's just dedicated to your business and then you might have one that's dedicated to homes that are currently for sale. And then you might have um, master bedroom inspiration, out exterior or garden, um, DIY tips, real estate tips like um, buying and staging, moving tips, uh, kids rooms, decor, spring decor, winter decor. And then you want seasonal boards. So you... You can really blow up some boards with some seasonal stuff. So right now, you can just have a 
call it springboard, which is not super searchable. But um, ideas for spring is not bad. Uh, I hate to dedicate a whole board to spring cleaning because that's just weird. <laughs> but you do want to have seasonal boards available. So like, if you go look at mine, you're going to see all the holidays. You're going to see Christmas, Halloween, sadly, Mother's Day, Easter. You're going to have all the different holidays represented because it's so searchable for you. So Lupe, the, the short answer is make sure you represent your business first and that your board is on top. Make sure you have inspiration for people who are looking that will take them to your business, like bedrooms, outdoors, pools, decks. And then you want to have seasonal as well. And seasonal can be uh, spring tips, which could include all kinds of things, as well as holidays. But she also um, asked, how do we link Pinterest to Instagram? Um, you pin, if you will install the pin it button directly into your browser, you can pull up Instagram on your laptop or your People still have desk computers, I guess, too. I don't know why. <laughs> you can um, install the um, pin it button in your browser. You pull it up on Instagram.com backslash, like, stay social you. And then and when I click the pin it button, it pulls every image from Instagram. And I can go through and go click, 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 click and add them all. It's, it's, it's really weirdly simple and quick. So quick. So, yeah. How many boards are too many? Um, when you get into the hundreds, you might have a problem. <laughs> but it's very normal to have 50 boards or 80 boards. Uh, I start to kind of combine boards when I hit triple digits. And I have customers who have several hundred boards. Uh, uh, yeah, it's overwhelming sometimes to go back and delete and combine and merge them. But 50 is totally normal. I probably have over 50 myself. So um, Lupe says, uh, cool, thank you. So invest more time in Pinterest and not Facebook. You're welcome. Uh, don't, 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 uh, don't tell Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, okay, so you have also been doing Pinterest ads. Yes. And um, uh, so I'm guessing, like, you're driving this traffic by using, like, what Heather asked, like putting that URL of your website out there. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, linking it somehow to good content or find out more. Is that what you're some sort of call to action or? Yes. Um, we've done, I've been playing around with Pinterest ads for the last couple of months. The most recent one that we did was for, a, to promote a webinar. And of course, you know, webinars, great evergreen content. And then you can talk to convert at the end of the webinar. Um, you have what we did. We created a landing page to sign up, to sign up. And we use that URL. I uploaded it directly into Pinterest. I put the description that I wanted it to have. I did um, I did a couple of different images to see which image would work the best. We did two. Shockingly, the one with the face didn't do as well, which I knew that would happen, but we tested it anyway. And then you, we paid, um, I think we did $5 a day to send traffic. And we spent hmm, less than $50, and we had easily... <clears throat> excuse me, easily over 500 people click through and go to the, the page, which was great. Um, and yeah, we awesome. didn't have, and that worked from Facebook too. We did tests for both. Um, we didn't start having signups until we edited the landing page so that the button for reserve my spot was the first thing you saw. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. Um, yeah. And it, it, the customer generated their own landing page. So after we run the first week, I'm like, you're not getting any signups. What's going on? And she's <laughs> like, I moved the reserve button. I'm like, put it back. <laughs> <laughs> put it back on the top. And all those things are so important for consumer habits and just how we all kind of operate and work. So I can see oh, yeah. why those little things do make a big difference. They do. And you, you have to think about your own, like my own habits, which are weird i i spend an inordinate amount of time on pinterest i love it it's one of the best search engines to me that exists because most people will go google something i'll go on pinterest something to see what pops up and you get great like if i'm because just me and you we talk a couple of times a week and we bring content and after you've done that for a couple of years you're like well i'm going to talk about tomorrow and it's a great way to see what's on everybody's mind so i can go type in social media tips and I'll get all these ideas. I didn't even think about um, 
that. I did, that didn't occur to me. And I've gotten some of my best inspiration, my best ideas just from Pinterest articles. I'm like, oh yeah, that I didn't that didn't occur to me. So it was a great search engine. <clears throat> All right, so we've got the why, right? We got the how to do it, all these little extra tips. Anything else that we need to know about using Pinterest in our real estate or lending business? Um, consistent branding is always important. Username, business name needs to be consistent. Make sure your bio tells people what you do. It brings not only the pain, but the solution. Um, you can't just be... It doesn't need to be vague. And a lot of times people are so creative, they created themselves out of the discussion. It, it, it needs to be on Pinterest. It needs to be more um, hands-on. So it, a real estate agent, finding homes in Hoover, helping you find your new home. These are super searchable keywords that really work. And you, that needs to translate into your board names as well. Again, nobody cares what Karen's favorite things are except, you know, me. So make sure your board names are consistent and that the titles are searchable and you want them to be visible. When you pull up your Pinterest profile, if you can't see the whole title, it's too long. Edit that thing and make it easier. Master bedrooms, boom, <laughs> children's rooms, make it so that it works for you. Um, be consistent in your efforts. You want to ideally pin. If you can't get on every day, that's totally okay. Make sure you're pinning at least once a week. And a little bit is better than none. Don't get overwhelmed. People get so wrapped around the axle about, I can't do 60 pins a week. That's okay. If you can do 30, do 30. And that sounds like a lot. But if you're only doing five of your own, let's say you only pin, you're only on Instagram five times a week, and those are your original pins that week, that's totally okay. The rest of them could be repins. Do what you can do. Just do it consistently. Love it. And I appreciate all the help that um, y'all pinned for me <laughs> on Pinterest um, so that I'm not sucked into yet another um, social media platform. <laughs> so um, uh, thank you so much for being here, Karen. And everybody, if you want um, to find out more how Karen can help you um, get you started or do an ad for you or whatnot, then Please reach out, Karen. Um, okay, we got to see how can we see your ad is what. Oh, um, um, the ad, it, I don't, it's a good question. I can go to the original pin where the ad is and I can show it to you, but I don't, you know, just based on the whole um, client confidentiality, I kind of hate to show you scouts from somebody else. I'm happy to talk to you about them. I can use, get, I can get permission to show you if I can. Um, and I'm happy to show you pins that we've used for um, for ads themselves because we've done several for different industries for different vendors, and that I'm happy to share with you. Is that am I answering the right question? Is that the best? She's about to do an ad for me, and I'm happy to share what we come up with because I've got a home seller seminar coming up on May 7th. Okay, cool. So she's going to start running that today, and we'll be happy to show you the copy. Mm -hmm. The graphic and what kind of stats if it if it attracts anybody or not so that will be something that you can copy if uh, if it works and if yeah, it does you can touch it. so <laughs> thank you so much for agreeing to share that that's great no i'm happy to so you know that i'm always completely transparent so um thank you again for being here thank you for watching um anytime that i hear some something great that we need to know that something is driving traffic to the numbers that Karen's experiment um, that she's recently done uh, has been successful, then you need to know about it. And I feel like it's my duty to make sure that we get the word out to you. So thank you again for being here. And Karen, thank you. Thanks. I, I love this. I'm always happy to help you guys. And if y'all want to drop any kind of comment, we can, you know, saying, yes, I'd like to talk more to Karen, then she can reach out to you. Um, if you have other questions that we didn't uh, get to answer um, that may pop up if you're on a replay, then please post them in the comments and we will go through them for the next couple of days and make sure you have answers. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with Get a Real Estate Life. And uh, we always want to make sure you have the real estate life you want. Have a great day. Thanks.